my name is uh, Marijn Braneff, and uh, here in the robot, I hope we have a connection, is uh, Robbie van Delden. And we're PhDs here at the University of Twente, uh, at the Me Human Media Interaction Group. And we're going to talk about our project Starbot, which is funded by the national program Comet. So now all the boring stuff is out of the way, we can talk about what is this. So what we see here is a telepresence robot, and of course we have a demo effect. Um, it's not working now, maybe. It is. I don't see you, Robbie. Do you see me? I think he's seeing me, but we'll see. Okay, so a telepresence robot is a robot where you are present somewhere else. So it's telepresence. It's like, uh, for example, a television. Everybody knows that. It's vision. You can see something that's far away. Tele. So be present somewhere else. Um, and this particular model is a double by double robotics. It is a self-balancing base with an iPad on top of it. Uh, and Robbie can usually see us with a front-facing camera. And usually we can see him, but I don't see him at the moment. Okay. And there's a rear-facing fa camera in the iPad as well, uh, which has a mirror here so we can uh, uh, look down. And if I put him here, you can just drive around uh, uh, neatly along the edge. So, the, so what's, it's basically Skype on wheels, but it's a bit more. It's, uh, uh, it gives you the freedom to be somewhere, which means that you are feeling more present. So normally I would ask him if he would feel present, but I don't know if he can say something. Hey. Yes. You, you can hear me, but you can't see me. That's <laughs> confusing, okay. That's confusing. You can see me, right? Yeah, okay. yeah I can see you. I'm very present there. Yes. <laughs> so how present I'm do you think you are here? He doesn't hear, hear me. Yeah. Anyway, so um, carrying on. So what is this device for? Oh, that's basically what he sees. Uh, what is this device for? Ah, now I see him. Turn around, ah, okay. show yourself to the audience. Yeah, I'll show you to the audience, okay. Hello, Robbie. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> so except for making you guys smile and uh, wave at the camera, uh, what, is, what are these devices for? So the engineers that de designed this product, they thought of uh, interesting use cases. So for example, uh, a sick child who uh, can attend his class, or uh, a physician who can uh, attend, his, uh, attend to his patients and, for example, ask about the pills, or the other way around. Uh, a, for, this is a project in Alaska where specialized teachers go to remote schools that are only accessible by airplane. And, for example, this is uh, speech uh, ther therapy. Um, but what we wanted to do is um, uh, think about this, this device, technology like this, is getting cheaper. So it means that more and more people will get to buy these things. So this model, for example, is about 2,500 euros, which means it's around the price of, uh, of the general public, they can buy it. So the cool thing then means that now we will actually figure out what these devices are for. So, um, and that's, that's basically what we're going to do. Uh, and if the general public starts using it, they won't use it for things like this. They will find new use cases. So that's what we're trying to do. So for example, Excuse me, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello. Yes, you. You, hello? Can you help me, please? Can, can you help me? Can you put a, a? I'm looking for some biscuits. I want to buy some biscuits. Can you put some biscuits in the in the basket below? Thank you very much. Dag mevrouw. Um, ik uh, wil graag uh, dit uh, pakje koekjes kopen. Als het goed is, legt er ook een envelopje in. Kun je daar, daar is het geld in als het goed is. Top, dankjewel. Cookies. So, pretty cool. So, our project is called Starbot. Uh, and that's an asterisk, which is star basically. And that's a wildcard in informatics. It means that in place of this asterisk can come any word. So, any new use case that you might think of, you could describe it in one word and you get, for example, shopbot. Uh, so what we're trying to do now is find, uh, or just play around with it and find 
cool use cases that the general public might do and see what kind of uh, possibilities are there and what kind of issues are there and uh, investigate them. So in this case for, for ShopBot, what did we find? So we found, for example, uh, some of the issues were that this device, when you buy it, it doesn't come with this handy high-tech addition that we made, so you can't carry anything. Uh, so we solved that by basically a plastic flower pot and some duct tape, like proper engineers. And now we can carry stuff around, like cookies. Uh, what's also a problem is it doesn't have any arms, so we can't pick out the cookies ourselves. We need to find help. We need to find someone who is willing to put the cookies in our uh, basket. And then what you saw in the movie, we need to go to the cashier and pay for it. And normally I would give the cashier some money, but I'm not present, so uh, I just had an envelope with some money in there, which is fine if you're the first person to do that, but if these things become common, uh, then if everybody does that, then you will lose your money for sure. Um, but we are touching on, on something interesting here, I think. So is this a legal buy, for example? I mean. Is the robot buying it? Am I buying it? Is it like buying on the internet? It's kind of in between, right? So I think that's something uh, we as a society need to decide what we think is going on there. So we had our cookies. We were happy. We were eating them. And we kind of got a dry mouth. So we went back and bought some beer. Um, sounded like a good idea. Uh, uh, I drove into the... Uh, uh, supermarket again, and was thinking, well, how much can this thing actually carry? I don't know. I didn't test that. So probably in the crate, maybe one can. So I got this nice Asian lady to put one can in it. Sorry, Robbie. I drank it. Um, uh, and then I went to the cashier, and uh, she asked me for ID, <laughs> which we didn't think about. I mean, you have to be 18 in the Netherlands to uh, buy alcohol. I am clearly over 18, but she couldn't see that on the screen. So I showed her my driver's license, which uh, brings me to another interesting point. So uh, in real life, you can see it's a real driver's license. You can kind of see if it's not fraud. On a digital thing, um, yeah, you could easily manipulate it. So it might be my 16-year-old niece who is buying beer with my recording, for example. And if that's going on, uh, who is guilty there? Is it me for lending her my robot? Is it her for trying to buy a beer? Or is it the robot because it's helping her? Or is it the shopkeeper who's selling it? So that's, that's another issue that we should think about. So while I was drinking my beer, sorry, Robbie, I was thinking, what if I drive in again now? Is that drunk driving? <laughs> and it got me thinking about rules about that. So uh, I, I, I thought about it a bit more. What if we would intentionally start breaking rules? And Robbie also wanted the beer, so we went back into the shop to steal a beer. <laughs> it worked, so kids, don't try this at home. Or I should say, don't try this from your home. Um, what we did, we got some accomplices to distract the cashier. I don't know if that normally, I didn't, never tried it, but I don't think people would do it if I just asked them, distract the cashier, I'm going to steal something. But with a robot, they do that for you. So we see the accomplices in the back. There's one, and another one. And then we lowered the height of the robot so it could easily sneak. Can you lower it? Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. So we managed to sneak past the cashier. Well, of course, don't arrest me, it was all fake, but let's just um, pretend for a moment I actually did steal it. And now we got away free with the beer, so now Robbie got a beer. <laughs> He's doing this. Um, but the interesting point here is, what if we would have been caught and they would have called the police? Well, probably it would confiscate my beautiful robot and then I would be screwed because the robot is worth way more than my can of beer. Uh, but just for the sake of it. Would they arrest the robot, put it in jail? Robot jail? Uh, or would they figure out who, that, I, that I'm the person? I mean, my face is on there. But what, for example, if I would put the face of Jan Dawe Krusko on there? Would he be arrested? Uh, so I think that's some interesting points as well that we should think about as a society. Um, we didn't. We just went outside. And then it was raining. And <laughs> we didn't know for sure if this thing was waterproof, so I had Robbie walk with me with an umbrella. Which is okay for a demo, but I mean, in, real, in the real world, if I have 
uh, need, need him to walk with me to go to the supermarket to buy a beer for him. He can just go himself, right? So um, uh, we found also some other obstacles. So for example, pavement is very difficult to get on, and off, on or off. It's not that stable. I mean, you can push it a bit around. Uh, but if it falls off, then it starts shaking, etc. Uh, and something else which you already witnessed here is the connection is a bit uh, iffy sometimes. So if you go outside here, there is still Wi-Fi. You can browse, but uh, having a Skype call is a bit diff difficult sometimes. Uh, so, well, w when we got in the office, uh, we thought, well, this thing is designed for in the office. Nothing can go wrong there, right? So, so um, the next morning after we sobered up from the beers, we were back at work, and I needed to bring a, a USB stick to a colleague on the third floor. So I thought, let's use the robot. So I put the USB stick in there. Uh, I drove to the elevator, got someone there to press the elevator button. Can't do that myself. Press the third floor button. I drove in. Awesome. Uh, the doors closed and gone was my connection. So the eleva elevator rose to the third floor. The doors opened. Aha, my connection is back. So I started driving forward again, but it takes some time to start up again. So just when I reached the door, the door slammed shut because nothing was going. I slammed against the door, and now I'm stuck in the elevator. <laughs> Shouting for help doesn't work. I tried that. So I had to go to the robot to save it, which is okay. I mean, it was in the same office building. But if it's on the other side of the world, it's a, it's, a, it's a different issue. So even if everything is solved, we still found some interesting issues. Uh, so if the technology is all perfect, so fully, fully charged battery, perfect Wi-Fi, no holes in the floor, no rain, it's indoors. Um, we found some social challenges. So uh, we were at an event uh, last week uh, with many people there, uh, and they loved interacting with the robot. People are very curious about it. They, they, they try to figure out how it works, what if you do this, what, what's going on. Oh, he drove off, oh no. Stuff like that happens a lot. Uh, so I was driving it around, uh, and what struck me most is they were really interacting with the robot, but not with me. So that kind of uh, reminded me of a story a friend of mine told. He's, uh, he's in a wheelchair. Uh, uh, he's in a wheelchair, and uh, uh, when his mom pushes him through the city, people approach them, and they ask his mom, how is he doing, even though he's right there? So I kind of had a similar feeling there. People are interacting with my transportation, kind of like that, uh, but not with me. But overall, people really love the robot. Uh, we, got, uh, yeah, we got many pictures taken. Uh, people were very interested, trying to talk to us, wave to us. Uh, many smiles, of course, just like you were doing earlier. Um, uh, and many people approached me afterwards saying, uh, can I buy it from you? How much is it? Uh, can I have it? I said no. Uh, which brings me to, well, Starbot again. So what we said is, uh, well, we said it, it will be, uh, pe people will try to buy it, and if it becomes cheaper, people will buy it. So these things will become more common. Uh, which will mean that there will be more use cases like the ones we just kind of figured out by playing around with it. Uh, and I think that's the, the, the cool thing about technologies like this. Uh, if you're just using it, uh, yeah, it makes you creative. You can yeah, just duct tape some, something to it, and then you can collect cookies or beer. So. And that's something that we love as, a, as scientists and engineers. Uh, we love this creative uh, connection that you have with your products, uh, with your demos, uh, and with your users. So uh, what I would like to say, last thing, is um, uh, whether you're a user or a designer, or uh, you know, basically just looking at the product, try to find your creative spark. Thank you. <laughs>